So as we alluded to earlier, the most important thing about playing the French horn is learning how to make a really good sound. Uh, it's, it's by far and away the most important thing that you can learn how to do. So how do we make a good sound? Well, there are three parameters that are involved. The first one is breathing, that is taking the air into the body, and breath support, that is letting the air out. So let's talk about breathing first. Now, those of you who are in beginning band probably have band directors that tell you that you need to breathe from the belly, and that is only partially correct. When we breathe down in the belly, we are not incorporating our lungs from about the sternum all the way up to the collarbone. So you're only getting about maybe 34-40% of your lungs in action there. So what we want to do is learn how to breathe not from the belly, but from the middle of our body, from the sternum. So make a nice uh, round cavity with your rib cage. Set the horn in a nice comfortable position and let the body expand out forward like this. The air will rush in as the rib cage expands slightly outward. The sternum falls into the abdominal cavity. Excuse me, the diaphragm falls into the abdominal cavity gives us a lot of the pressure from the air, the atmospheric pressure will just push the air basically right down into your lungs. So, let me demonstrate. This is nice, nice and easy. Uh, uh, the easier the motion, the better. So, once the air is in the body, very easy. It's just like breathing normally, except we just expand the natural motion. Uh, we need to have more air volume in the lungs. We need to have and the resultant air pressure is extremely important. So, we get the air into the lungs. Now the next thing is how do we get it out with the amount of pressure that we need in order to make a really good sound. There's only really one way to do it and that is to use the abdominal muscles to press in towards the backbone, thereby pushing the diaphragm, which is the band of muscles right below the lungs, pushing them up allowing the lungs to contract, thereby producing some pressure and allowing the air to come up and over the tongue, out through the embouchure. So, let me see if I can demonstrate that. We breathe in, and at that moment, we set the embouchure, we set the muscles here, not too tight, just a little bit of pressure, just enough to get the diaphragm to start to feel it move upwards just a little bit, getting a little bit of pressure. So. And as I play, I feel the muscles of the abdomen pushing backwards towards the backbone. A very, very relaxed but slightly engaged kind of way. That continues on through the phrase until we're ready to breathe again. And then we expand outward, allow the belly to come out, breathe all, and then visualize breathing all the way up to the collarbone, filling the lungs completely, especially as a beginner. As we get to be more advanced, it's not necessary to fill up all the way every time. So that's breathing in a nutshell. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the part of horn playing that is the most misunderstood and the most concentrated upon of you know, any of the parameters that we need to examine in terms of making a sound, and that is the embouchure. That is how the two lips set onto the mouthpiece. Now, it's important to realize that there are three different ways that we can do this. However, there's one thread of truth that flows through all three different embouchure settings. And that is, what we need to do is use the large muscles of the face to push the lips together. So the lines of force are pushing in rather than pulling back. If you see any of your colleagues, any of your friends at school pulling their corners back like that, you know that that's incorrect. That's going to cause a lot of problems uh, in terms of range, in terms of endurance, in terms of all sorts of different things. What we need to do is use the lines of force using the large muscles that surround the lips themselves to push together. Now, the three different types of embouchures that we have at our disposal are completely determined by the size and shape of your lips. So I'll go through them very quickly. Uh, two of them have German names. One is called Ansetzen, A-N-S-E-T-Z-E-N, -E -E and that refers to an embouchure where both lips are inside the mouthpiece at all times. So, basically, it's like that. 
Then there's another German name for the second type of embouchure, and this one is the one that's pictured in a lot of textbooks. It's called Einsetzen. It means that the lower lip ridge is outside the cup of the mouthpiece at all times, in all registers. You can see closely the ridge of my lower lip is set outside the rim of the mouthpiece. So that's the second one that has a lot of advantages, especially in the low range. Uh, and then the third one is a hybrid. That means both of them together, whereas we use the Einsatz and Embouchure in the low range and the Ansatz and Embouchure in the high range, thereby, as we push the Embouchure together to get into the high range, it allows us to get the aperture, that is the hole between the lips, smaller and smaller, which allows for the notes to come out in the high range. So let me just demonstrate. We'll start with, a, with an Einsetzen, that is the ridge of the lower lip is outside the mouthpiece. <laughs> You can see right about there, the lower lip shifts up into the mouthpiece and allows the aperture hole to get smaller and smaller and smaller as I go into the high range. I'll do that shift one more time. Pushing my lips closer and closer together as I go up and conversely, as I come down, controlling the action of opening the hole in between the lips at a very, very, in a very, very controlled kind of a way as I come down. That's embouchure in a nutshell.